Welcome to another unbagging from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. I am today unbagging a game that I received just a couple of weeks ago here in the quarantine from Tiny Battle Publishing. This actually came out, I want to say it was almost a year ago. But the game is, let me, and I've already taken it out of the bag just to make it a little easier, but the game is called Rogue State, once again from Tiny Battle Publishing. Uh, the game is designed by Mike Molyneux, and what it does is it takes you, you are representative of the, of the uh, Democratic Re Republic of Northern North Korea, DPRK, I think is what it, what it is. Um, I got some of those names wrong there for a second, but you are the supreme leader, and you are to take the country basically from 19, I think it's 53 through 2030. There are 12 turns. I'll cover that here in just a minute on the map, but you're to guide it through, you know, that 75 to 80 years worth of history dealing with all types of issues, internal revolutions and politics, negotiations and diplomacy with China and Russia, uh, economic issues, development of resources and infrastructure, technology, military power, etc. You're trying to, in essence, guide uh, your country through those 75 years. Now, straight up, obviously this game, you're going to be playing a a regime that doesn't look favorably upon its people. It uh, deprives them, abuses their rights. So I haven't played the game, but I'm not sure how that comes out in the, in the design. But I want to make sure you're aware of that. And I'm sure if you're a war gamer and you got this game, you, uh, you are aware of that. The game is a solitaire game where you are playing... Uh, those 75 years and trying to get a, uh, a specific score. So once again, Polybag Game. One of the only Polybag games that I've ever, actually one of the only games I've ever seen that has come with a 12-sided die, which is pretty cool, and it's a purple die, uh, but that was included. You will need to play the game. They did not provide, I think you have, I think there are four six-siders that you need You'll place those in certain areas on the map after you roll them, and they represent your, I think it's your cabinet ministers as they deal with the different uh, different issues represented on the board. Um, the rules, it's first, uh, it's, it's a fairly thick rule book, I'm going to be honest, 22 pages. It looks like it has the last three, the last two pages are basically designer rules or designer commentary. And designer notes but the remaining 20 pages fairly dense rules it's uh, but there are a lot of good examples like pictures there's another example of a picture how to deal with diplomacy there's pictures on almost every page and multiple pictures on most pages which I think is a good thing I'll show you the map here in just a second it's really cool I think it uh, it, it actually is a control panel uh, where you're kind of controlling every action of your regime and your countries. Here's those cabinet ministers that I was mentioning to you. It says you're going to roll 46 and reorient the face of each die such that they display half of their rolled value. Round it up. Place each reoriented die on the upper left space of each of the four cabinet ministers. So that, that's going to represent those, but there's a look at some of... When I mention control panel, you can kind of see those knobs there. This is a foreign debt track that you simply track your debt on. Um, and there is uh, a look at the Supreme Leader. Uh, obviously, there are two represented on the map, and we'll, we'll look at both those. But a very nice-looking game with some really cool components. Uh, the rules, fairly dense, as I mentioned, but there is a very well-done video by my, the designer Mike Molyneux on YouTube. I think it's about 52 minutes. And he goes through the different components, how to do different things, shows you the cards, etc. So I, th I think he actually did a really good job on it and shouldn't be a hard game uh, for you to learn. Let's go ahead and look at the counters. There are two small, uh, almost quarter sheet counters. These are resources, so simply uh, the money that you're going to get, the backside looks like that. 
They are all the same. You're simply going to store those on your board, and when you earn them, you move them into your, uh, your playable area. Here is, I'm sorry, upside down. Here are the counters that represent all types of events and issues that you have to deal with, as well as your markers. For instance, threat indicator, threat effects, foreign debt. These are for your military or coalition defense or offensive infrastructure. You're gonna use those to mark on the map where you stand in certain levels. And then these top red ones coincide with different events for, uh, for, the, for the years. Once again, not exactly sure how it plays because I haven't played it yet. I just got it doing an unboxing, trying to learn it, and then I will play it and hopefully do a somewhat of a review video and maybe even a playthrough. It looks very, very interesting, I'm going to be honest. So those are the two sheets. This is kind of a separator for them so that they didn't stick together. Here is a look at the double-sided play aid. And I was looking at this before I shot the video. It's very well done. It will take you all the way through. So once you learn the rules, I think you'll be able to generally follow this along. And it even gives an understanding of what's going to happen, like when you roll the dice during this turn, or what's going to what you're going to do, etc. So it looks like it's pretty easy to follow. And then that turn process goes into the second side. You can see there's kind of nine parts to that turn sequence, the final being reset the board. So very well done. I've said this many, many times. A solo game is not finished until they've done a really nice player aid because the reality is I get tired of solo games that I have to continually flip back to the rules book to even play. So this will be a nice, uh, not a change. Most of the games I have are like that, but I've played some uh, that are not. So I'm going to move the camera over just to center it up. But here's that control panel. We'll just kind of go down it top to bottom, left to right, just kind of giving you a feel. I'm not going to necessarily go through all of the elements because I, once again, haven't fully read the rules. So here on the upper left, you've got your production value. You can see there's different markers. Here is, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to show you this cabinet minister. So this is that industrial minister where you're going to roll a die and then you're going to half it rounding up and then place it on this dial and that is your skill factor of that industrial minister. You're going to do that for each of the ministers identified on the board. Kind of a neat thing. Gives some variety and difference to the game. Also, I, I bet could be fairly punishing. If the dice aren't kind to you like they often are to me, I might roll a one on all of my ministers and I'm not going to have any benefit or might even have negatives. You can also see down below the production is an infrastructure investment. This is where you invest in your power, um, technology, etc. It can be affected by economic sanctions. That's what it says here. Subtract from that number. Uh, this is an export market track, uh, see, showing how good your goods are, how well your goods are desired on the open market. The more, the more demand there is, the higher the cost, the less demand for that type of good, the lower the cost. Uh, here is that foreign debt track. You're going to track that. Debt is a big part of the game. Here are your two, uh, supreme leaders, um, picture there on the bottom. I, I know looking in the rules, you store your money on the active leader and then uh, you can spend those as you, as you earn those. I'm not sure how much that says six revenue. It may mean that you earn uh, six revenue every round plus something, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Turn track at the top. There are 12 turns starting in 1953. The next one, if you can't read that, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and just show that to you. Here's the turn track. You can see it goes from 53 to 60 to 67 to 74, 81, and ultimately ends in 2030. So it's about seven years. Looks like one turn is seven years. Uh, but that's going to be the, the way the game progresses, and it's 12 turns. The game says that it plays in 30 minutes to two hours. So my guess is you can be dominated fairly quickly if your rolls are bad or you get certain things that happen 
and then the game can end early or it can continue all the way through the 12 turns and end up taking you uh, two hours. This middle section is a critical event section. That's what it says on the thing. And there are four different types of events, natural disasters, revolution, coup d'etat, and coalition offensive. So you're gonna track, you can see there's things like bribes, oppression. So obviously you're gonna, there's some kind of give and take where you'll put a marker on that. Your oppression level might be three because it gives you some benefit but then it also affects other tracks. So for instance, the more oppression you have, the more revolution is going to happen, I'm assuming. Um, so you can see there's more of those tracks. Here there are threat effects. Not really sure exactly what that is. I apologize, there's regional tensions. I think that's where you're going to track, uh, you know, things that are happening uh, amongst your different regions. You've got your nuclear development. You also have a director of research down here, another cabinet minister, once again, where you're going to roll a die and place that. These are um, the different types of development uh, in the nuclear stages. Not really sure what they coincide with. Going to the top of the map, you've got your military power. Below that is your social economy. You have a public services minister. Below that, you have Russia-China relations. And then you have diplomacy and you have a foreign minister. So those are your characters and your cabinet that are going to help guide you through this process. Really think that's neat, though, the way they've put, put this in kind of a control panel. Obviously, you're not going to push buttons to make things happen, but it's a it's an abstraction of that process to make it a playable game. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, cards. There are cards, and these are, they have a symbol on them, and there are three different types of symbol you can see at the top there. There are blue squares, which I believe are the first era. The red triangles are the second era, so these cards come in once you've met that second era. And then the, the white circles are cards that represent uh, the third era. And, and here's just an example, non-aligned movement. DPRK forms alliances with unaligned nations. And then there's some text there that helps you figure out what it, do, it does. If activated, you roll a D6. If the dice roll is equal to one or two, you lower the Russia-China relations by one, which is a bad thing. If it's a three or four, you increase S export market by plus two spaces. If the DR is a six, increase S export market by three spaces. So you can see there are different events that are going to happen. And that's why I mentioned things can go wrong for you and you might end the game in 30 to 40 minutes because you just got unlucky. Uh, but there are all different types of events. One that I was looking at and, and which the designer really went through a lot was... Uh, one of the economic sanction cards where you can allow to have more small business autonomy and it leads to lessened revolutionary furor. Uh, can't really find where that is, but you can see there's a lot of neat cards here. And once again, when you have an entire deck of cards, there's going to be some variability uh, to the game. And one game's not going to be the same as the last game. So I think that's always a good thing. You know, trying to... I'm going to cover up uh, the evil empire there. Sorry. Um, just looks interesting. Right now, obviously, with the quarantine, very interested in solitaire games. I've bought several. I've had a couple of others uh, from publishers. Tiny Battle Publishing provided this to us uh, in exchange for a review. We're going to do an unboxing as well here just to show you uh, what you get in it. But it looks very entertaining and very interesting I think you're going to have trouble with this if you have trouble playing, you know, quote unquote, the bad guys. Obviously, North Korea is not like uh, the United States of America or other free countries, a little more uh, uh, regimented and uh, some not nice things go on. We all know that. So anyway, very interesting looking game. Looking forward to getting into this uh, here shortly. After I finish up watching that uh, great introductory video video by Mike Molyneux. Um, but yeah, so that's Rogue State.
from Tiny Battle Publishing. Definitely an interesting looking game and I'm interested in trying it out. So thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. And if someone's played this and watches the video, let me know what your thoughts are. What I would love to do obviously is play it two, three or four times. Maybe do a little written content on it to share it with you and then do a, a simple video review and or maybe even a playthrough. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. Uh, and keep gaming and we'll all get the, uh, through this together. Thank you.